In 1973, a woman named Constance Webb led a research team into the Amazon jungle in Peru. Even though she was expecting a baby, she went there to find a special spider. She believed that this spider's venom could work wonders for people. It could not only heal the worst human diseases, but also give someone greater strength. Constance hoped to use this spider to discover treatments for diseases that we still can't cure. She told her friend Ezekiel Sims that some people in the forests of Peru were believed to be much stronger than normal people. They had incredible speed and other abilities that normal people couldn't even dream of. These abilities were said to be given to them by the spiders. Sims didn't believe her at all, so he left Constance alone in the forest and returned to their camp. There, he found Constance's research notes. The notes Constance had written proved she was telling the truth. So Ezekiel Sims took photos of all her notes. Just as he was about to follow her, Constance returned, shouting with happiness. She had found the spider she was looking for, the one with the healing venom. You could see how happy and excited she was as she showed the spider to her team. While all this was happening, Sims suddenly shot and killed two of his own team members. But Constance couldn't understand why he would do such a thing. Then Sims demanded that she give him the jar with the spider, claiming the spider and its powers were his alone. He tried to grab the jar from Constance, and during their struggle, the gun went off and Constance got hurt. But Sims didn't care that Constance was injured and pregnant. He just took the jar and left her there to die. As Constance was close to death, the very tribe people she had been telling Sims about came to her rescue. They took her to a pond inside a cave, hoping that a bite from the spider could heal her. But Constance's condition was getting worse, and it was time for her to have her baby. Soon she gave birth a baby girl and named her Cassie. After giving birth to Cassie, Constance's health got even worse. The tribe leader, who was taking care of her, made a promise to Constance. He said that he would be there waiting for Cassie if she ever returned with more questions. Then the story shifts to 30 years later, to the present day. Cassie is now an adult and works as a paramedic in New York City alongside her co-workers Ben Parker, who invited Cassie to attend his brother and sister-in-law's baby shower, and Cassie says, I don't like parties, but I will come. After her duty ends, Cassie gets home. She has a routine. She pulls out her mother's old suitcase from under her bed and looking at her mother's research notes and other belongings. While Cassie was looking at her mother's things, she got an urgent call from Ben. There had been a terrible accident near a city bridge. A car had crashed and was hanging off the bridge with a man trapped inside. Cassie and Ben worked together to get into the car and rescue the man, but then Cassie got trapped in the car herself. The car lost its balance and fell into the water. Right after Cassie fell into the water, she woke up and saw lots of glowing webs around her. She had never seen anything like it before. These were special webs that somehow showed her what was going to happen in the future. Cassie saw a glimpse of what was next, but before she could do anything, she woke up again. This time, she was out of the water. Ben had saved her, and he was telling her that she had been underwater for three minutes. After that, Ben checked Cassie's oxygen levels and noticed they had gone up from 79 to 89. Then, something strange happened. The same check seemed to happen again. Cassie asked Ben if he had just checked her oxygen levels before, but for Ben, this was the first time he was doing it. Cassie had somehow seen this moment in her mind before it actually happened. Thinking it was all in her head, she decided to ignore it and got up to leave. The story then shifts to show Sims, who has now become very wealthy and leaving a party, Sims invited a security guard to his house. After they spent some time there, they both went to sleep. While sleeping, Sims had a scary dream where he saw three girls dressed in spider costumes trying to steal his spider. In the dream, they end up killing him. He woke up terrified from this nightmare. Actually, Sims still had the spider with him. He had let the spider bite him, which gave him the superpower to see into the future, just like in his dream. Because of this, he decided to find and eliminate these girls before they could get to him. To do this, he planned to use a woman from the security agency who was with him. He tricked her into giving him the code for a special software he had made. This software could locate anyone just by their face. Right after Sims got the code he wanted, he grabbed the security lady's hand and injected her with a deadly poison from his body, which killed her. Meanwhile, Cassie came at Ben's house for a baby shower party. 
everyone was playing a game to guess the baby's gender. Suddenly, a girl suggested they should guess the baby's gender, not realizing they had just done that. Cassie reminded her, saying they had already guessed. After Cassie spoke, everyone felt weird because it seemed like she had predicted the future again. Just as she was trying to figure out what was happening, Ben interrupted her with an urgent call. They rushed to an emergency where Cassie found one of her colleagues had been in an accident. She immediately started trying to save his life. But suddenly Cassie had a vision where she saw her co-worker O'Neill having an accident by a semi-truck. She tried to stop him from getting an ambulance because she knew something bad was going to happen. Despite her efforts, O'Neill got into the ambulance and drive away. Then, just like Cassie had foreseen, the ambulance was involved in an accident, and O'Neill died. Meanwhile, Sims used a hacker to break into a security system. This gave him control over all the security cameras in New York. He used this to find and create images of the three girls he kept seeing in his dreams, the ones he believed would come to kill him. Seeing their images, Sims noticed that the girls in his dreams were still young and hadn't developed any superpowers. He believed it would be better to eliminate them now, before they grew up and gained powers, which might make them harder to deal with. At the same time, Cassie was at her home, grieving the loss of her colleague. She was warming up food when she saw a pigeon fly into her window and die. This sight caught her attention, but she was snapped back to reality when her oven timer went off. So Cassie looked back at the window and realized that there was no dead pigeon and the window wasn't broken. So she again opened the window and just then, the pigeon that was supposed to die landed safely in front of her window. By opening the window, Cassie saved the pigeon's life. This made her realize that she has the power to not only see the future, but also to change it. Afterward, she decided to talk to Ben about everything that was happening to her, so she left her house and went to the metro station. When she got there, Sims was already there, because his hacker had informed him that the three girls he was planning to eliminate were at the metro station. Here, Cassie was on the train with three girls, and when she looked at them, she had a vision of their deaths. The person she saw harming them in her vision was Sims. Suddenly, she saw Sims in real life, moving from one train apartment to another, heading towards them. Cassie acted fast, grabbed the three girls, and got them off the train to safety. After they got off the train, the girls were confused and didn't understand why Cassie had made them leave. Cassie noticed Sims on the train, watching the girls closely. She warned the girls that they needed to leave the station quickly, but they didn't listen and started making a commotion. Cassie then pointed out a man dressed like Spider-Man approaching them. As he moved quickly towards the girls, Cassie hurriedly led them towards another train to escape from him. In train, Cassie saw another vision that Sims is following them, so she quickly led the three girls off the train to the ground floor to get away from him. Even though they were now on the ground floor, Cassie knew the man was still following them. She was trying to get the girls out of the metro station to safety, but before they could escape, the police officers stopped her. While Sims sees this, he attacks the police, and police were busy trying to stop him. During this chaos, Cassie saw her chance and quickly led the girls out of the metro station to protect them. Once they were outside, Cassie hailed a taxi so they could escape from Sims. They managed to get far away from him, finally safe for the moment. While in taxi, Cassie asked the girls for their names and learned that their names are Julia, Anya, and Maddie. As they were chatting, they got distracted by a news report on the radio. The report was saying that a woman named Cassie had kidnapped three girls, which was a shocking accusation against Cassie. So Cassie took the girls and fled to the jungles to get away from Sims and the police. Since there were no cameras in the jungle, Sims's hackers couldn't track the girls, and the police couldn't find Cassie. Once they were in the jungle, the girls recognized Cassie from before and were upset with her. They didn't understand why she had brought them there. Then Cassie explained that she has the ability to see the future and that she had seen visions of the man, Sims, causing their deaths. That's why she brought them to the jungle, to save them. When Cassie told the girls about her ability to see the future and the danger they were in, Maddie laughed, but no one paid attention to her. Then Julia mentioned seeing a man walking on the roof like a spider, which really surprised Cassie. It made her think of her mother's notes about such things and Cassie decided she needed to leave for a bit, so she told the girls to stay put and not leave for three hours, promising to return, and Cassie rushed back to her house and started reading her mother's notes. 
The notes talked about a tribe of spider people who could walk on walls and ceilings and also had the ability to see the future. Cassie, who could also see the future, wondered if she might be related to this spider tribe. So, she attempted to climb a wall to test if she had the same abilities. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to do it. But Cassie also found a photo in her mother's notes that showed Sims with her mother. She realized that Sims was the man who had been after the Julia, Anya, and Maddie. Meanwhile, the girls were in the jungle, feeling very uncomfortable and hungry. Because of this, they left the jungle and went to a nearby cafeteria to get something to eat. But as soon as the girls got back to the city, Sims's hacker located their whereabouts and informed Sims of their exact position. On the other hand, Cassie had returned to the jungle by car. But when she arrived, she discovered that the girls were gone. She tracked their footprints, which led her to a cafeteria where she found the girls dancing together. When the girls saw Cassie, they began to say sorry, but before Cassie could get them to safety, Sims appeared. He attacked and killed each of the girls one by one. Just as he was about to do the same to Cassie, everything stopped. And Cassie was back in the jungle, realizing it was all a vision of the future. She knew the girls were in real danger, and she had to act fast to save them. Following their tracks, she hurried to the cafeteria where they were. Cassie was in a rush to save the girls, but Sims got there first. To rescue them, Cassie smashed the cafeteria's front door and drove her car right inside. She managed to hit Sims with her car and showed the girls they could escape by getting in the car. Just when Cassie thought they were safe and about to get away, Sims caught her hand. He used this chance to inject poison into her. Despite this, Cassie succeeded in rescuing the girls. Meanwhile, Sims found out from his hacker that Cassie, the one who saved the girls, is actually the daughter of Constance Webb. When Sims found out who Cassie was, he was really shocked, and Cassie took the girls to a hotel stay, and she knew she couldn't look after them all by herself, so she thought about leaving them at the police station. However, there was a big issue with that plan. One of the girls, Anya, was a legal immigrant in New York. Her father had been sent away by the government, and if the police discovered Anya, she would be forced to leave the country too. So, Cassie had no choice but to let the girls stay at the hotel. Once the girls were asleep, Cassie went back to the cafeteria where Sims had previously attacked her. Right after Cassie arrives, Sims shows up too because he's been tracking her. He introduces himself to Cassie and explains that he's after the girls, and tells he believes that the girls will soon develop superpowers and that they'll use those powers to kill him. So, he wants to eliminate them first to protect himself. Hearing this, Cassie suddenly wakes up and realizes that everything she experienced was just a dream. The next day, Cassie warns the girls about Sims and explains that he's after them because he's afraid they'll get superpowers and harm him. She advises the girls to always stick together because there's safety in numbers. Cassie also tells them to be cautious of Sims because he's not only odd but also dangerous with the ability to inject poison with his touch. Cassie warns the girls that if Sims grabs any part of them, he will inject his poison, which can stop their hearts. So she teaches them CPR technique so they can help each other if needed. And later, she reveals that all of Sims's superpowers are documented in her mother's research diary. Now Cassie tells the girls that she needs to go to Peru's forest to learn more about Sims. She reminds them to look after themselves and to stick together while she's gone. After saying goodbye, she takes a map of the forest and her mom's belongings and heads into the heart of the forest. There, she encounters the tribal chief Santiago, who says, finally you come. Cassie has arrived to seek answers. So Santiago takes her to a special pond inside a cave. This is the place where Cassie was born and where her mother, Constance, passed away. Seeing this place, Cassie feels sad and doesn't understand why her mother would risk coming here, potentially putting Cassie's life at risk. Hearing this, Santiago gives her a mysterious smile and tells her that to fully understand everything, she needs to learn about events that happened around the time of her birth. Her story, Santiago implies, began even before she was born. He magically removes Cassie's soul from her body. Her soul drops into the pond's water and transforms into a web of life, which is like a magical path for her. This web takes her back in time to see the events of when her mom went into the forest to search for the spider. It's like a movie playing just for Cassie, 
showing her all that happened back then. Cassie sees the whole journey from the time her mother found the special spider to her mother's death. It's all too much for her, and she can't make sense of it. So, the magical web of life shows her a scene from the past where Constance is talking to a doctor. The doctor explains to Constance that her unborn baby has a serious illness that couldn't be cured in their world, and that her unborn baby might not survive. This revelation deeply upset Constance. When Cassie learns about this, she's overwhelmed with emotion and starts to cry. Now Cassie finally gets why her mom went to the forest and risked her life just before Cassie was born. She used to think her mom was being reckless for her own interests, but now she sees it was all to protect her. While she's still trying to process this, Cassie's soul returns to her body. She's amazed and confused about how all this happened. When she asks Santiago, he says that he didn't do it. It was Cassie's own powers at work, powers that she's soon going to fully understand. Now Cassie thinks her only superpower is to see the future. But Santiago tells her that's just the start. She has much more potential. He explains that with the web of life, she can actually be present in different places simultaneously and save lives at once. Santiago also tells Cassie that she has a rare ability to alter the future, not just see it. He says her full range of powers will reveal themselves when she's in a tough situation. Meanwhile, back in the city, Sims is furious because he can't find the girls. It turns out that Cassie had left the girls at Ben's house for safety, and they're still there because they followed Cassie's advice. And today was a big day at Ben's house because Ben's pregnant sister-in-law Mary was going to birth a baby, and she was not doing well. The girls couldn't wait around, so they rushed to the hospital with her in car. While Ben was driving, suddenly Maddie were caught on camera, and Sims was able to figure out where they were. Meanwhile, when Cassie got to Ben's house to get the girls, she found that nobody was there. So Cassie uses her power to look back in time, and discovers that Julia, Anya, and Maddie went to the hospital with Ben's sister-in-law, and on their way, Sims tried to attack them. To protect them, Cassie quickly took an ambulance and drive toward them. Meanwhile, Sim's hacker managed to turn all the traffic lights green on the road they were on, helping Sims in his pursuit. And because the traffic lights suddenly changed to green, caused a traffic jam on the road. Soon they noticed Sims outside their car, holding a bomb, intending to use it on the girls. Just as he was about to throw the bomb and blow up their car, Cassie arrived just in time and rammed into him with her ambulance, preventing the attack. The bomb Sims was holding ends up under a different car and blows up. Cassie quickly uses this distraction to get the girls into the ambulance and escape. Meanwhile, Sims notices that Julia, Anya, and Maddie escaping in the ambulance and climbs on top of it, trying to stop them. Seeing this, Cassie quickly tells Anya to grab the electric shock device and place it on the roof of the ambulance. When Anya does this, Sims, who is on top of the ambulance, gets shocked by the electricity and falls off. Then Cassie drives the ambulance away, but it suddenly stops when they get to an underpass. Now Cassie uses her ability to see the future to figure out what's going to happen next. Remembering that she has the power to change what's going to happen, she grabs the ambulance's radio. Pretending there's a medical emergency, she calls for a helicopter to come to a building close by. Because Cassie and the girls were close to a firecracker factory, they went inside with a plan to set a trap for Sims. When Sims followed them into the factory, he walked right into their firecracker trap. Cassie and the girls set off a bunch of firecrackers one after another, which distracted Sims. While he was focused on the noise and chaos, Cassie and the girls made their way to the roof of the building. They were waiting for a helicopter to arrive so they could get on it and escape from Sims. But Sims showed up to ruin Cassie's escape plan, so Cassie decided to fight him to keep him busy. During their fight, they ended up on top of a billboard tower, where Sims got the upper hand and grabbed Cassie by the throat, starting to inject his poisonous power into her. Cassie was in a bad spot and close to dying. The girls, seeing Cassie in danger, couldn't just watch. They rushed to help and save her for a moment. But Sims easily overpowered Julia, Anya, and Maddie, who didn't have much training. He threw each of them to different spots where they were surrounded by danger, and it seemed like there was no way to escape without getting hurt. And Sims was mocking Cassie, challenging her to save the girls who were all in different dangerous spots. Just then, Cassie remembered what Santiago had told her. 
She could be in multiple places at once if she really needed to save someone. With this in mind, she tapped into her superpowers and, using the web of life, she split into several versions of herself, each one rushing to rescue one of the girls. And Sims got nervous when he saw what Cassie could do. He tried to hit her to make her stop, but Cassie was determined and didn't back down. After saving the girls, she led Sims to a specific spot she had seen in a vision of the future, a place where she knew Sims would meet his end. When Cassie got to the right spot, a large metal piece fell on Sims, and he died. Now Cassie managed to save the girls by defeating Sims. Unfortunately, the collapsing billboard also caused Cassie to lose her balance, and she fell into the water blow. As she was falling, a piece of glow metal hit her eyes, and she started to sink into the water, struggling to stay afloat. At that moment, Julia, Anya, and Maddie didn't hesitate to dive into the water to rescue Cassie. They struggled, but managed to pull her out. When they realized she wasn't breathing, they used the CPR technique Cassie had taught them. Thankfully, it worked, and Cassie started breathing again and woke up. But the shiny metal shard that hit Cassie's eyes blinded her. The accident also left her body paralyzed. Later at the hospital, a nurse asked Cassie about Julia, Anya, and Maddie. Cassie told her that the girls were her family. Hearing this, the girls were thrilled because Cassie called them family. Even though the accident had caused Cassie to lose her ability to move and see, it also unlocked all of her superpowers. Cassie, amazed by this twist, shares with the girls that she may be blind now. But her vision of the future has never been clearer. After gaining her powers, Cassie can see a future where the girls are battling their foes successfully. They have incredible abilities that are beyond their wildest dreams, and they always win against their enemies. Cassie shares with them a vision of this future, where each of the girls has superpowers, and Cassie herself is like Madame Webb, a character known for her psychic abilities. 